Euro dollar, our currency of the week, which is also the world's most popular currency pair. So Euro dollar is down even lower this morning, more than I had expected. <clears throat> there was a dollar rush on the elections. We talked in, in depth about that. More fiscal stimulus, tax cuts, and spending on infrastructure mean more um, dollar, uh, mean more uh, higher interest rates and stronger dollar. Uh, but there are also political implications, not only economical from these elections. Remember, Trump follows Brexit. The populist right-wing uh, national wave is uh, uh, <clears throat> also crossing Europe. So let's look at the quick calendar, political calendar, which is, of course, slower than market calendar, but uh, important to watch. In December, we have a referendum in Italy. Okay, uh, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi is facing once a constitutional change that will make governance more stable. And polls show he will probably lose it. He said he will quit if he loses this. And that means more uncertainty in Italy, okay? Also in December, <clears throat> uh, there is the um, German, German CDU party, Merkel's party has its conference. And there we expect Merkel to announce if she's running once again or not. If she wins, it'll be her fourth term in office, okay? So the, um, there is some uncertainty. Mer Merkel, Angela Merkel is seen as, um, as sort of the anchor of stability in Europe centrist, um, maybe fiscally conservative, but liberal on social issues right in the center. In March, we have elections in the Netherlands, a small country, but it could, well, but still of high importance, of course. And we also have a right-wing movement over there led by uh, Hurt Wilders. Hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And, um, and the bigger, Events are, well, elections in France in May, the uh, National Front, Front National, also butchering the name in French anyway, but led by Marine Le Pen, has a good chance to um, you know, gain more seats in Parliament and, of course, aim for the presidency. Even if she doesn't win, <clears throat> she'll impact the centre-right party, either led by Sarkozy or by Juppé. Uh, and the socialists are set to lose because François Hollande is very, very unpopular. He has a 4% approval rating. And in, in the autumn, in September, more or less, we have elections in Germany. Uh, so the two biggest countries in Europe have elections. And of course, Brexit is always in the background. For markets, <clears throat> it focuses, of course, on the ECB. There's low inflation. We'll get updated data this week. <clears throat> Um, the ECB is hopeful that inflation will pick up. Core inflation remains stuck, remains weak at 0.8%. Let's see if it moves maybe a bit higher uh, tomorrow. Uh, but even with even headline inflation, which is the target of the ECB, it's moving very slow. Oil prices are falling once again. They're at least not moving higher. The, 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 we are seeing the diminishing effects of the uh, fall, earlier falling oil prices, but they are still stuck at around... Uh, I mean, headline inflation at around 0.5%. Key test is in December. More QE. Remember, the ECB's program, QE program is ending in um, March, at the end of March 2017. In terms of monetary policy, that's just around the corner. They told us, Mario Draghi told us that in December, he'll have news for us. It's either continuing the program at the current rate of 80 billion or tapering it down or totally shutting it down, which seems unlikely. Uh, growth uh, gives a bit of hope, at least it's stable, at least the uh, continent is not in recession. So 0.3% um, growth rate uh, been confirmed. Also not that exciting, about 1.2, 1.3 annualized. I believe the ECB will continue <clears throat> with the foot on the pedal, more QE, for quite a long time, pushing the euro lower. Some think we'll see uh, parity um, in the uh, early months of 2017. I'm not so sure, but uh, depends. a lot depends on what the ECB does. So my bias on the euro, on euro dollar remains bearish, even though I have doubts about what Trump will actually do. Um, in the European side, things still do not look good, okay? One, one glimmer of hope, I must say, Today I saw a headline saying that the European Commission uh, wants some fiscal stimulus, no more austerity. Uh, let's see if this really 
comes to fruition, uh, that will that was that will be probably too little, too late. Fifty billion euros of stimulus. Um, anyway, currently the current FX situation is favorable for Europe because exports are more attractive and uh, inflation is pushing higher, is moving higher. So that's good for the ECB. Can it last? Um, we'll we'll see soon enough. Let's look at the euro dollar chart to complete this segment. Uh, I'll mention the levels we've talked about before. So the bigger levels currently 107.10. I still see the move this morning as a false break. Still, well, an unconfirmed move at least. If we follow over, so 106.50, we could support 105.20. The levels uh, seen in December, very, very strong support and even stronger support at 104.60. The lowest level in over, levels in over a decade. Um, <clears throat> on the top side, we have 108.20, 108.50, much uh, more crowded over there, 109.50, um, 110, 111.20, and 112.80, sort of the bigger levels on euro dollar. All in all, euro dollar finally broke out of range. This is the weekly chart. And, but remember, euro dollar uh, did not stay for too long at these kind of levels. Um, let's see if this time we could have a more substantial move to the downside. Okay.